over my years and years of teaching, I have learned three things that beginner jazz drummers tend to do. And so I want to share those with you today. So hopefully you can get out of these habits and sound like a better drummer. Stick around to find out. Before we dive in, I want to give you a free PDF that is Jazz Drums The Basics, which will give you an in-depth guide as well as uh, the drum uh, parts notated. And that'll give you tips and tricks and some concepts so that you can practice and become a better drummer. Mistake number one that I see far too often is the drums are not set up well and where your seat is is not set up in a great place. Often I see the drums are too far away or too close to the, to the seat. And what that does is that messes with how our legs can function. And our legs are super important when we're playing drums and when we're playing jazz especially. We want to have our legs um, almost at a 90 degree angle, maybe a little bit higher um, so that it's a little bit more than a 90 degree angle. Um, again, we don't want to have our legs super far stretched out or super close, finding that nice happy medium. That mistake number one ties into mistake number two, which is that your balance is off, both within your body and the volume balance between the instruments. So many times when I hear a drummer play, I hear this. Instead, in jazz music, that balance needs to be flipped. So the ride cymbal is the loudest thing, and the hi-hat is the next loudest thing, and the snare drum and bass drum are nice and quiet. What that means for us is that we're going to feather the bass drum, which is just playing it as lightly as possible, barely even touching the beater up against the head. And then for the snare drum, we might not even play the snare drum at all, but in this case, we will still play it on two and four, but we'll play it nice and quiet just to quiet, just to show you um, how quiet we can really get. So listen to this. Again, that mistake with the balance ties into number one, mistake number one of how we're set up, right? If we're too far away, our balance is going to be off and we're going to have to be doing this while we play, right? As I'm playing, I'm keeping my body as still as possible. Now, I say as still as possible. What I don't mean is tense, right? I'm still as totally relaxed as I can be as I'm playing. And I'm totally relaxed so that I can let my limbs do exactly what I want them to do and not hinder their movement in any way. Mistake number three is playing the snare drum on two and four. Now, in jazz music, a lot of the playing that we do, if it's um, in a small group setting or even in a big, big band setting, um, there's not snare drum on two and four. Often the snare drum is something that complements and um, almost has dialogue with the other instruments. So that might sound something like this instead. Now that was a little bit more advanced than you might be uh, able to do right now, but that is totally okay. The concept is that we don't want to play the snare drum on two and four all the time. Now there are some times, like at the biggest part of a song, where we might want to play the snare drum on two and four for it to be really um, impactful and really strong, but otherwise we want to try and avoid that and instead maybe play acrostic just on beat four, like this. Or on two and four, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
or just on beat two. Or we can play the snare drum on the ands. Two and three, four, one, two and three. Here's on the and of four. If you try and fix these three mistakes, you are immediately going to level up your drumming and you're going to sound way more uh, stylistically authentic and it's going to sound way better and feel way better for everyone else that you're playing with. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you liked what you saw, you can hit that like button and subscribe as well so that I can feed my uh, Komodo dragons. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you when you're a better drummer.